Right, thank you. Uh, we're going to have something for a few minutes. We'll share something for a few minutes. How many were here yesterday? All right, thank you. Um, it, it's, it's amazing um, that we're here once again. I want to say something to everyone who's here that, uh, trust me, I'm taking this meeting as most important than anything else. We see going, touching so many people, and touching few who can touch others. Touching the few who can touch others is more important than touching a million of people. One time I, I remember I went to preach somewhere and I preached and I preached and after preaching nobody came to Christ and, and had fasted for this event for seven days and nights no, no, no food, no water dry fasting for seven days or oh, someone surprised for seven days fasting I fast for 90 days no food day and night <laughs> So I, I want to, 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 to this praise to preach, and I'm preaching, and, and I say, those who want to receive Jesus Christ, you know, I, I had really prayed for these people, and I didn't want to see people coming to Christ. And when I said, who wants to come to Christ? There was no one. There was no one. I was like, what is this? And I began to pray, and you know, when that, that type of prayer where you pray when you are so annoyed, and in my prayer, I found myself speaking in tongues. And when I was speaking in tongues, I didn't know those tongues. It was the language of that area. So the people didn't come to Christ only because they didn't want to, but they didn't hear. They couldn't listen to English. They couldn't get English very well. So I was surprised. Nobody came to Christ. But when I, I began to pray, I found myself in the gift of speaking in tongues, and in those tongues was their language. And I thought I was speaking in tongues not knowing I was preaching in their language. <laughs> the time I was opening my eyes to say amen, there were a lot of people in the front saying they have come to receive Jesus. Yeah. Oh, I think I didn't go this. Yeah. Oh, are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. Now, this is now... Um, very interesting. You know, um, believe it. And don't believe for him for, for twenty thousand dollars. I want you to believe for him for twenty million, fifty million dollars. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen. I've prayed for people who, after praying for them, they got fifty million dollars in their account and they don't know where it's coming from. So many people, they get 20 million in your account. If people that do what, what do you call these things, um, what do you call this in America? Uh, no, no, no. Where they go to? Is it lotto? What do you call it? Lotto. 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 People that they do that and they win money. All right. I, I remember one time I met this guy and, and I said, can I make you rich? He said, yes. I gave him the secret codes and the numbers for the lottery. No, hear this. <laughs> hear this. Being a prophet is dangerous. I said, oh. I said, and, and I wrote it on the paper and I gave him. I said, go. The man hid a lot of money. Eh? Unfortunately, he didn't come back. He just ran away with the money. He's so rich now, very rich. Yeah, I see him in newspapers and all that's where I see him. But at least he's rich. At least he's rich. At rest. So, it's the same way. God can provide for you. There was no any way where there was a kitchen where chickens or were being prepared for the Israelites to eat. The Bible caused, caused uh, the 
uh, the manna, which was coming from heaven. It was coming with what? Huh? Whales. Whales. The Bible calls them whales, but actually, in those days, they were not chickens. They may be actually fried chickens. Now, imagine whales were being fried, roasted. The Bible says roasted whales. Where was the kitchen? There was no kitchen. Who was flying them? Who was preparing them? Who was roasting them? But they were falling every morning. They were falling from heaven. And the same God is the same today. He can make money rain in a bank account. Oh, my goodness. The problem is faith. One time I needed so much money, so much money for a project. And I had no money one time. And, and I told my wife, I said, I want money now. So in the morning, just under my pillowcase, there were bundles, $200 under my pillowcase. Don't ask me how did it come there. Because if you ask me, I want, I want to answer it because even me, I don't know. It's impossible. But with the faith, I will tell you, that's what they call miracles. Physically, it's just impossible. You, some of you here, you're going to walk out of this place, going to find out all your debts are canceled. <laughs> Sit down. How many watched when I prayed for all the students in the church and all their school fees got cleared? How many watched? You watched? You watched as well? I just prayed in church and said, all students stand up. All students, I'm talking about 15,000 students. All their, all their school fees paid. In fact, the university had to pay them. It was cleared and the university was actually owing them. Wow. Wow. I'm not saying like, oh, this one today, another one tomorrow. At the same time, all students, all students. You saw it as well? It is possible. And, and I know you are sitting down here and you're like, do you know who is actually standing and speaking to you? Do you know the anointing he carries? Yes. Do you know to, you can actually be, oh my God, am I might talk to somebody here. Yes. You know when you are sitting down here and I can sense some are not yet adjusting to know who is this man talking to me right here? He's a man sent by God to take you from nobody to somebody. If, if, if you can't accept it, you will remain the way you are. But I can sense the spirit. There's so many people here who completely change. Yes. The, there's a movement. There's a shift in the spirit. There's a shift. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, sit down. So I've spoken to you about fathership and I've spoken to you about business and I want you to believe God for that. Oh, come on. We, we, can, we can't afford... We can't afford to have people who become rich because of the hand of God, and now they are no longer talking about God. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm watching this some uh, uh, um, these some celebrities in America. They, uh, I don't even know their names much, like the, the Kim Kardashians. <laughs> are you seeing how they're spending their money? Are you seeing? Yeah. Do you see how they spend their money? Yeah. Oh my God! It's a waste. What, what are Christians doing in America? I've never really heard of a Christian who is a billionaire in America and is influencing the world. Yes. All these rich people, look, come on, look at how they're wasting their money. Look at all these celebrities in America, how they're wasting their money. Mm -hmm. Oh, I lost my ring of $10 million. All the, ah. <laughs> and these people, they, and all these people, all they're talking about is... They are not even talking about Jesus Christ. They actually speak things against Jesus. But what, what, what is the church doing? As for me, I refused. I refused. I refused. I will never be poor in my life. Say that again as well. Say I will never be poor. Say I will never struggle in my life. Now, I want to have that faith. Yes, I want to have 
And I want you to move that faith. Yes. Tell us, I will never struggle. I will never be poor. No. Listen to me. There's no way this, these celebrities must have all that money and become so rich and then um, use their, their influence to communicate the world in a negative way. They're so rich. And they'll, they'll come naked on the newspaper. I don't know. They don't even care. What are Christians doing? What are Christians doing? Oh, you're hearing me, right? Yes. What are Christians doing? So, listen. Go out there. Don't just sleep. Believe God for a business. Yes. Did you hear me? Yes. Believe God for what? So I'll become rich. rich. Say it again. I heard someone was like, no, the Bible says, uh, seek face his kingdom and his righteousness. The Bible didn't stop it there, my friend. It says that all things which you need shall be added unto you as well. So the problem here is not seeking his kingdom. We, we are here actually because of his kingdom. The fact we moved on and we came in here is because we are seeking his kingdom and nothing else. But after seeking his kingdom, what else? God didn't just promise us to, to move out of Egypt, but he promised us of what? Milk and honey. God will not just set you free. After setting you free, the next thing he's going to give you is milk and honey. Let's go to another thing. I'm, I'm going to make the two things to share with you. These are the most important things I'm sharing with you. Let's go to another thing. Supernatural. Say the supernatural. supernatural. I'm going to teach you how to make miracles. All right. Let me show you a sign. Can you stand up? Ready? Okay. I'm going to command one of our hands to grow. And it will grow as you're watching. One? Okay. Sorry. And when it grows, I'll command to go back. It's going to go back as you're watching. Then I will tell you how you can do it. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. This is so awesome. All right. <laughs> All right. This left hand. All right. Just watch. Grow. Grow. Just watch. Grow. 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 Just grow. 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 You saw what's happening? All right, just just watch. Grow. Oh my Grow. Oh my Grow. Oh my gosh. Grow. Oh my gosh. Grow. All right. All right. All right. Just grow. Grow. I just just put them like this. Like this, okay? Okay? Grow. Grow. Just come, just come, just come, just come. Come, come. Look at this. Do you see this? Do you see this? Look, look, all our hands are straight. There's not any hand here that is. Look, look at our hands. Because some may think one hand is. Okay, look at this. All right, all right, all right. Just watch now. Go back. Go back. Go back. It's going back. You see that? Go back. Just put a space here. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. 
go back. You see? So, watch. It is still long a little bit. You see? It's still long a little bit. So, it has to go back. Go, go, go. All right. Now it's equal. All right. All right. Watch this. Watch this. Oh. Now watch this. If I can command the bonds to grow, I can command the business to grow. Now sit down. What, how, how is that possible? I want to share with you now. How do we command? Do you have anyone here having a problem with ears? Or one ear can't hear properly? Huh? You can't hear. Huh? It's, it's damaged from the military. So you, you can't hear or what? What's the problem? I can hear just a little bit out of my right ear. Huh? I can hear just a little bit out of my right ear. A little bit. Okay. Now what? I, I want to open this ear now. Okay? And I, I will tell you how this miracle is going to happen. Because you cannot tell people about Christ. Yet you have no power to demonstrate. And that's what it's like in America. We're having people who just saying, oh, Jesus Christ, oh, hallelujah. Your miracle is on the corner. Which corner? Can you show me your corner? <laughs> Pastor just preaching. We have, no, 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 no. It's not the time to preach and not demonstrate. We are having powerful preachers in America, but who can demonstrate what they're preaching? Yes. You can't tell me my miracle is on the corner. Tell me which corner. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I open this ear right now. And I move the problem this year. Just go. Just go and move the damage by the hand of the Lord. By the hand of the Lord. In Jesus' name, the damage move out. The biological disorder right now, I speak to you. I'm fixing it now. I fix you. I fix you. The eardrum, I fix you now. I put a new one right now. I put a new one right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Jesus. Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Now try to close this one. Try to close this one. Try to close this one. And be telling me what's happening right now. Be telling me what's happening. Tell me. Tell me what's happening. I can hear. Huh? I can, I can hear perfectly out of this here. It's healed now. It's healed. Yes, Major. You can hear perfectly. The problem was I couldn't hear um, uh, language very well out of this year. And now what's happening? I can hear. All right. How do you fix such things? Ah, I think I'm talking to wrong people. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. Oh. It's very, very simple. Genesis chapter 1. I want you to take you into the scripture. Genesis chapter 1. I just want to teach you about the supernatural how to make miracles. This is the... We, we can't live like this. In fact, you are the first person who you are struggling, and yet you are supposed to be demonstrating this. Amen. You are supposed to live a supernatural life Amen. and demonstrate it to other people. Yes. Are you hearing me, son? Yes. Yes. Only this year, I've, I've, I've prayed for 31 people who, who have come back to life. Uh, how many were watching on the TV? Yeah. 31 people in church. 31 people came back to life. Well, other people, when they, one dies, they go and bury them. As we raise them. If you are doubting, die. And call me. You will see. Uh, I'm not even joking. If you think I'm joking, try to die. And tell your relatives to say, when I die, the prophet must come and raise me. I will actually come on my private jet and I will land there and I will come and say, where is the, the person here? I said, what, where are you going without saying goodbye? I'm telling you, raising the dead is simple. But what's happening nowadays? 
We are having people who are dying. We have buried our aunties, our mothers, our fathers who are supposed to be risen. Did you hear me? So how do you make miracles? How do you just speak to to a hand? You know a hand, a a bone to grow. (laughs) (laughs) How do you describe that? Medically, scientifically, how can a bone grow? How can you do that? There was one person who was doubting that I can pray for, for hands to grow and a hand can grow. I commanded his neck to grow. <laughs> this man had a long neck. <laughs> if you are doubting, let me know. He became like that animal. What do you call it? Giraffe. I command your, your neck to grow. <laughs> prophet, please, please, prophet. Put me back the way. <laughs> oh, I love people who doubt. I love them. I proved to them with evidence. This kingdom, I mean, which we preach of Jesus Christ, will never be compromised. Oh, are you hearing me, somebody? So how to make miracles? <laughs> how many minutes many? He said I have to go out now. Can I stop? No. Twenty minutes to go. No. Please, please. Sit down, everyone. Oh, you're here, right? And don't worry, I'm gonna do that. That's a very small. I can even the, your your diabetic can even go just by a cough. <clears throat> then you, you know. <laughs> we deal with. How, how many have seen how people they queue in the church with HIV, AIDS being healed? You have seen, huh? What do you mean, huh? Have you seen how people get healed in my church? Have you seen how people get healed of HIV? Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Mm. You too. Amen. You'll be healed. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I have a serious anointing of HIV. Serious one. Amen. So get this revelation. The third thing I want to share with you is uh, uh, supernatural in Genesis 1. Uh, don't want to talk about it. Genesis 1. People, they want fish. But I'm teaching you how to fish. Not the fish. I don't want to give you a fish. I want to teach you In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and earth was without form and void and darkness. Oh, just only that. Do you understand that sense? Do you understand that sense? Yes. And, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, all that is sense. And there was light, all that is sense. And God saw the light, and it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, all that is light. All that is sense. The Bible said in the beginning, the earth had no form. Practically, this is sense. This is sense. Sense. And God said, sense. And there was light, sense. I- I'm going to speak with you for a few, th- uh, for a few minutes, as I said. That how, how can you perform miracles just with a simple word and miracles happen? When you understand God as God, look at this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
all right? And the earth had no form, and it was void. And darkness covered the face of the, of, of the earth. And the Spirit of God moved. In a sense, the movement is called energy. Hello? Hello? Yes. And God said, in a sense, there's nothing like said. In a sense, there's what they call sound. So when God said, it wasn't the said. It was what? Sound. So there was what? Sound energy. All right. And among the scientists, they say this earth was formed by a big bang. And they don't know what that bang was. It was the sound of God. All right? Now, so God said. Now, God said. The said is the what? Sound. Now, let's look at this. Sound is what? Energy. So, the earth wasn't formed from nothing. It was formed from something invisible. It's like I take two bottles. Give me this bottle. And I take one which is empty. Give me this. No, no, no. You see, I can see no bag. It was in her bag, this bottle. And she's like, empty. She's like, empty. Oh, yeah, in her bag. <laughs> oh, the question is, which bottle here is empty? This one, right? Scientifically, which bottle here is empty? Scientifically here, there's no bottle which is empty. Because this one has got air. Oh, I think I'm talking to the wrong people. Oh, you're following, right? So scientifically here, none of these bottles is what? Empty. Is empty. According to science. All right, let's just hold it. Now, hear this statement. So there's sound energy. And then God said, let there be light. According to science, light and sound, which goes faster? Light. So when God said, it became what? Sound. Let there be light. And we have light energy. Mm. Mm, I'm talking to wrong people. So now, light energy, if there's a thunder and a light, a lightning, right? What strike first? And then you hear what? Which one between the two travels faster? Light. Light. So God said, when God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. Now, do do you understand that all this is sense? So we've got sound energy, we've got light what? Energy. Energy. Mm, I think I'm talking to right people now. Now, God said, sound energy plus light energy. But understand this, God didn't speak when the spirit wasn't moving. The Bible says the spirit of God moved upon the waters and God said. So God had to wait for the move of the spirit. When the spirit was moving, God said. So we have the move of the spirit plus light energy plus sound energy. The world was created. Mm. Let's go. So when we speak of sound energy, for you to know that in sound there is energy, that man said his eardrum was destroyed in the military because of the sound. Which means in in the sound there's what? Energy to destroy something. Too much sound can destroy your ears. Which means there's something that can work in destroying your ears. There's uh, the energy in the sound. Too much light. You see this light? You can face them. But the other lights, you can't face them. They will destroy your eyes. Why? Because in light, there is what? Energy. (sighs) So we're having two kinds of energy here. Light energy and sound energy. So what's the meaning of, of, of this scripture here? You just read the scripture, you know, you all you'll be seeing is science. 
sound energy plus light energy. And light energy moves very fast. Sound energy too, very fast. Only the light is more faster. But these two, they, they move very fast. And God used these two to create the, the, the earth. But he didn't use these two energies when the spirit wasn't moving. He used them when the spirit was what? Moving. moving. Imagine we're standing on the continent. I understand according to science, science says um, this earth was one solid mass which was divided into two, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere by the tissues. All right? And then spread it into continents. And that this earth, the continents which we're living on, they are plates floating over the sea. And that is the theory. But Alfred Wegener, another scientist, argued to say, how strong were those forces to separate the earth? And why does the earth not fit in the jigsaw puzzle? The map of the world. If, if this came out of, if it came out of, 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 of one, one, one continent, if it was one thing before, why doesn't it fit in the jigsaw puzzle? That if we take this plate of Asia and this plate of, if we pull it together, it's going to fit. Why doesn't it fit? If you twist this one, you bring it here, it doesn't fit. Even you take this one, you bring it in here, it doesn't fit. So it's not true. You're hearing me, right? Yes. You're hearing me, right? Yes. And he also argued, he said, why those um, uh, uh, currencies just happened long millions of years ago? Why now America or, or Africa is not being divided again? Because it was supposed to be, if it was happening because of forces, this force was supposed to continue. Now we could have Africa again divided now and another continent again divided. Why is it not happening? If it is true. So in other ways, there is no any proof that this earth was scientifically made. Did you hear that? Yeah. But it was God's science. So when God said, let there be light. And I want you to understand these two statements, light and sound. That's where the whole secret of moving in miracles, signs and wonders stays. Now, look at this. So light energy plus sound energy made the earth to be there. And the earth is here. All right, verse 16 of Genesis chapter 1 says, And God made two lights, the lesser light to rule the day. I mean, the lesser light to rule the night, and the greater light to rule the day. Just that, it confuses me already. Two lights, lesser one and the greater one. Which means the lesser one, I can face it, there's no energy to destroy my eyes. But the greater one, it can even destroy your eyes. But which one here rules the day? The greater one. Oh. Should I stop here? All right. So we have got the lesser light and the what? Greater light. And I wonder then if God made the earth with the light and sound by saying, let there be light. If God really made the earth by these things, then what's happening? Jesus Christ comes in the New Testament. You know what he says? He says, you are the light of the world. Oh my goodness. But go back to verse 16 of Genesis chapter 1. It says what? He made two lights. Lesser one and a greater one. And he didn't tell you what type of light you are. My friend, you may be a lesser one or you may be a greater light. Now let's see what happens in the lesser light and what happens in the greater light. Lesser light, when there's lesser light, the Bible says lesser light to rule the night. And what happens in the night? You begin to, to sleep, wake, tired, there's darkness. If you are going through that in your life, when, where you feel like 
you are tired with life, if you feel like there's darkness around you, if you feel like nothing is moving, you are weak, my friend, you are a lesser light. Because Jesus said you are the light of the world. But he didn't say which one. And he made the two lights lesser and greater. Why are people moving in the day? Because there's too much energy. That light gives us too much energy for movements. So you've got the energy to move, energy to work, energy to what? But when the light goes off, you become weak. Why there's lesser light? So it's either you are a lesser light or you are a greater light. So if you want to, manf- to, to move a, a, in a dimension whereby you can control things, like the day is controlled by greater light. The Bible says, and the greater light to control the day. So in the day, things are moving. People are moving. Now, if you, if you want that to happen in your life, where things are moving, there is energy, like everything is moving. Now, everything is moving. Cars are moving. Everyone is moving. Because there's too much energy. Now, if you want things to be moving in your life, you need greater light. It will give you greater energy. Just like what happens during the day. That's why Apostle Paul said, wake up you who sleep. For those who sleep, sleep up in the night. And those who wake up, wake up during the day. Then he says, we are not of the night, but we are of the day. Oh, am I talking to someone right here? So what happens? If I take my hand and touch this man and I'm a lesser light, no matter how I may pray for him to be healed, he wants to be healed. Scientifically, light is used in hospitals to heal people. They call it radiotherapy. Oh, you ever heard about radiotherapy? They use what? Light. Scientifically, light is being used to heal people of cancer. And Jesus said, you shall lay your hands on the sick. Why? Because you are the light. So the greater the light, it bangs all the causes of cancer. All the cells of cancer die in the greater light. That's why in a hospital, they are using radiotherapy. Why? They use so strong light to burn all the cells of cancer. And Jesus says, you want to use that light in the hospital, you're going to use your hand. He said, you're going to lay your hands on the sick because you are the great light. Oh, am I talking about somebody right here? So we have people who want to, I pray for people, they're going to get healed. Do you know why? Because you are a lesser light. So if you are a great light, you're going to command bones, bones grow. Because in a great light, there's so much energy. This is why I'm standing here like this. Oh, say Takato she did. Oh. I may stand here. And uh, I, I may I may stand here like this and I look at her like this. She may start shivering there. And the Holy Spirit can carry her where she is and push her out. Do you know why? Greater what? It's because of what? Greater light. So people, they wonder what's happening. And I'm, I'm standing here like this. I said, just wave my hand like this. And people are falling. Do you know why? Greater what? Greater light. So when I stand here, I, I know I'm not just a person. I am the light of the world. So if you want to move things, You must make sure that you operate in the greater light. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? God made how many lights? The lesser to control and the the greater light to control. Why are we having people moving in the day? Too much energy for them to move. Why are people things not moving? Why are people's life not things not moving? They're operating under which light? Less light. light. So you can go to a disease and say, be healed. It doesn't want to live. Because it can't move. Things move in a greater light. Things move in a greater energy. Are you talking to me, somebody? Oh, are you hearing me, somebody? This way I can can go somewhere and say, be healed. Last week, I think some of you watched 
cars were being, people, sick people were being taken to, 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 to the church from hospitals. How many watched that program? People were being taken. In. It was crazy. And I'm like, what's happening? And I'm standing on the pulpit like this and I'm, people were queuing outside the church. Ambulances. And these people, they're coming and they're told you will never walk again. They are released from the hospital that we can't do anything. The backbone destroyed and this woman can't even sit down. It's coming on a stretcher from the ambulance. I said, bring her here. And she comes in the church. And everybody's saying, what's going to happen today? And I said, in the name of Jesus. All right, before I even finish, the woman stands up and begins to run. So I receive that one. Oh, are you hearing me, somebody? We need this. We need this here in America. Do you understand? I just come to shake your hand because I know you need healing. Do you know you need healing or you don't know? You know? Tell them I am a greater light. How many that a great light? How many? They are a great light? Are you? Ah, don't tell me. Even you, you need to hear it. Even you. Not only your eyes. There's one, one of your bones here. Yeah. Which needs attention. Yes. I need it. Major oh. one. <laughs> So it's very important. No, don't, don't, don't worry. Already, don't, don't forget today I'm praying for everyone in the, in the, main, in the main church. So I don't want to do what I call prayer redundance. Well, I pray for you here and I pray for you there again. No, let me just speak to you. I'll be laying my hand on everyone in the service already. And we're going now. From here, we'll be entering the main service. You see, so it's very important for us to understand. Very important. You know, I, I, w I wished I could have more time to share with you these secrets. But the little I've shared with you, now you know. So what must you do? You must become a greater light. Yes. Yes. Do you know what Moses did? God said to, to Moses, what is it that is in your hand? He said what? A rod, a stick. But God said, raise up your hand. Which means what God was asking, what was in his hand wasn't the rod. But if God was asking for the rod, he could say, raise up your rod. Do you hear that? Yes. God said, what do you have in your hand? He said, a rod. God said, raise up your hand, not the stick. So he raised up his hand, not the stick. When he raised up his hand, the sea parted. So where was the energy to separate it? In the hands. Oh, I'm talking to wrong people, I think. The palmer says, rise, shine, for thy light has come. Why is God saying light, 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 light? It's a sea, gross darkness has covered the earth. But when you rise and shine with the light that is on you, it's a sea. He says, see, light has risen upon you. It says, see, light has come unto you. He says, people shall come unto your rising. They shall come unto your shining. They shall come unto your light. Gentiles and all kings and nations, they shall bow to you, oh my goodness. 
Sirona manti ya ba. Zora di ya manto. Zaya manti. You were busy saying, pray for this woman, pray for this woman. Yes. If I don't pray for you, even here, mm -hmm. you'll be operated. Okay, on this shoulder, what happen. happens on this shoulder? Papa, pray for me. What happens on this shoulder? Answer the question. I don't know what happened, but I had uh, five accidents. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, five accidents. <laughs> yeah. No need. Oh, our prophecy already in the main service. Oh. Today I'm prophesying like prophecy is getting out of fashion. I'll be prophesying as if a prophecy is getting out of fashion. Raise up your hands, everyone. Say, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus. Help me, Help me to, understand to understand the principle of fathership. Oh Lord, Lord, help me, help me to, have faith to have faith to venture in businesses. Venture in businesses. Holy, Father, Holy Father, help me, help me to, operate to operate in the greater light. In the name of Jesus. I refuse, I refuse to remain in darkness. I refuse to be weak. In Jesus' name. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be sick. I am a light of the world. The whole world is waiting for my shining. As I get out of this room, I'm going to shine in every aspect of my life. People shall see my rising. People shall see my rising. They, will see my they will see my shining. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Raise up your hands. I pray for you. I pray for you. Holy Father, touch your people. Touch your people. Touch your people. Lord, we pray. Touch your people. Touch your people. Touch your people. Touch your people. Father, these are your people. The sheep of your pasture. They are hungry for you. They are hungry for you. They are thirsty for you. They are thirsty for you. Fill them. Fill them. Oh God, fill them. Oh God, fill them. Oh God, fill them. Fill them, fill them, oh God, fill them, fill them, fill them. Let your spirit rest upon them. Your wisdom rest upon them. Your grace rest upon them. Your glory rest upon them. Your light rest upon them. In Jesus' name I pray. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am more than a conqueror. I will, I will shine. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I, will shine. I will shine. I will demonstrate, I will demonstrate the, power of God the power of God and the love of God. Love of God. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for the Lord. Clap your hands for the Lord. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Let me be seated. How many are blessed? Yeah. How many are happy? What's, what's the problem?
very close to death. And uh, he has like, uh, now he has uh, some uh, cocaine problems. He's been doing gr drugs. Um, sometimes he doesn't know what's going on, you know. Uh, Where is he? Uh, I think he has to be here somewhere around because they were having some food. Uh, they were marching, I think. Yeah. I believe. I believe for his his deliverance. Amen. Don't worry. I'm gonna already pray for everyone. I'll be praying for everyone already so soon. Thank you. Yeah. It is very important that you are here. That's what it matters a lot. Does she hear English, that one? Does she hear English? My wife, I can translate. No, I'm asking, does she hear English? No. Huh? No. Where is she from? Mexico City, we both are. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to you. Don't worry, I'll talk to you soon. Um, we are ready for the service. I'm having so many people here today. And I have to lay my hands upon everyone. You know, it's, it's, it's a quite a job. Amen. One hand touching you of anointed man of God yes. can change your life forever. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you soon. I'll be seeing you soon. I have learned God and I've learned the ministry in a very difficult way. As there was no one who could teach me. You know, Moses, there was nobody, no one completely who was teaching Moses. He didn't go to any university for his calling, but he was a powerful man of God. So his Apostle Paul, so all these great men of God in the Bible. Then you go to school for that. Going to school is, is important because you, you learn. Now imagine you are sitting down and you're learning. But as for me, I had a, a big problem because there was no one who was understanding me. Yeah. I was in churches where they didn't believe in the power of God. And, and I'm in church and I'm having a calling and I'm so young and I was just 10 years. And I'm standing and I greet someone who falls down by the power. Oh, in the class at school, when I enter the class, people were falling by the power. Demons were manifesting in the classroom. <laughs> and I was chased from one school to another. Wow. Oh, I think this side they're smiling. Isn't it? <laughs> At least this side they're not smiling. At least this side. I'm having some few people who are able to smile. Now, you look at this. Now, and I didn't even know what it was. And I didn't know what it was. And remember, I'm coming from a Muslim background. My father was a Muslim. My mother was a Muslim. And, and, I greet somebody and it's falling down. And I'm like, what, what's this? <laughs> and I was chased from one school to another. They, they said, this, this young boy, we don't understand what's happening to him. He has some powers. And that's how they describe it, some powers. Wow. So I didn't know what, what it was. I was rejected in many churches because they don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And one thing I want to tell you something is, when you are sitting here, willingly, and that you're not forced to come in this room. I want you to have this in your mind that I'm going to share with you something for a few minutes that's going to change your faith and change the level of your spiritual life. Yeah. Listen to this. <laughs> Listen to this. I love, I praise God I have people who are believing here. But I, I'm used to preach to skeptical people so I can prove to them. The, the good thing, God sent me to a medical school where I learned about 
um, anatomy. I did anatomy at school, and I know much about science. So it becomes so nice to combine science and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a serious lecture today. Amen. And trust me, when I combine these two things, you... Or are we here together? Now, get this. All right. Now, so you are sitting down here and you're like, okay, what is going to say now? What is it going to say? You just watch this. We're having so many Christians who don't really know where their life is going. How many here they are hungry for God and they want to preach him? They want to be used by God in one way or another? Yes. Do you have somebody here? Yes. Do you have some people here who want to be used by God in one way or another? Yes. Do you have people here who say they want to become so rich so that they can reach out and be used by God. Do you have those people in here? Do you know, do you know we're having a big problem whereby there are so many people f uh, sponsoring football, sponsoring boxing, sponsoring wrestling, but we are having no one uh, completely who's sponsoring the gospel. You know what God spoke to me? He said, he's going to raise up a new generation. This new generation, it, it, it'll be a great generation. If you can see in America, every year about a thousand churches are closing. Churches are closing in America. Every year, th of a thousand, and you, you are waiting. So you stay here. You know what's happening actually to churches nowadays in America. It, it's no longer like before. Churches are closing. People don't care about God anymore. And things are happening like that. And you are here. And why did God call you? And you are seeing all these things happening. And why can't you say, God, use me? Use me in one way or another. Use me in one way or another. I, I want to tell you something, which is most important. Okay? I will tell you something. It doesn't need a lot of people to do it. It needs one person. And that one person is you. As young as I am, as young as I am, I have about 3,000 churches worldwide. I've preached almost in every continent. I've preached in, in I, I don't even count the countries I've gone to preach physically. I've preached in India. I've witnessed Christ in Australia. I have witnessed him in many countries. I can't even... Many countries. I've gone in many places and preached him in many areas. As I'm speaking to you now, I'm preaching. People that are watching me somewhere right now. Amen. They're watching me on TV. Amen. But I want to tell you something. It only needs one person. In South Africa, there was no any church with uh, uh, 10,000 members. There was completely no any church. With the 10,000 members, there wasn't any church. The biggest church had 9,000 members. And this church has been there over 50 years. And when I went in South Africa, God said to me, son, it will start with you. Amen. God said it will start with you. And I've been in South Africa for one year, uh, 11 months. But I, I'm saying we have about 80,000 members coming every Sunday for church. Are we together, somebody? Are we, are we together? But that is not only way that I'm ministering of, of preaching the gospel to these people. But I must be used by God so much to touch the needy. Are you here, somebody? Are you here? I'm, I, I'm touching so many people who are struggling, going through problems financially. I'm talking about financially. Not as a church, but I as a person. And that's what I want you to speak about. I want to speak about you getting into a level where you can become spiritually strong and witness to people as well as financially strong. Yes. Yes. <laughs> anointing without money is annoying. Oh, you didn't hear me, what just said. What did I say? I 
are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. Anointing with what? Anointing. It's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. <laughs> and um, as I said, I'd like to share with you, the first thing I want to share with you is um, why are we having problems in the United States of America in terms of the gospel and what's really happening? I'm going to tell you things which God spoke to me. We are having a serious problem of, of submission in America. Yes. <laughs> a serious problem of submission. When I say submission, what do I mean? We, we don't have people in America who really understands the, the meaning of father, fathership. Yes. We have a serious problem. Very serious problem. Hello? Hello? Yes. We have a serious problem of fathership. You know, Apostle Paul said, you may have many instructors, but you must have one spiritual father. This is Apostle Paul. You know, he said, you may have many instructors, but have one spiritual father. We have people who mistake fathership and worship. I've heard people saying, what's the meaning of fathership? And what, what's the meaning of fathership? The Bible says we must have no other father apart from one father who is in heaven, yeah. which is true. Yeah. Fathership simply means God himself fathering you through someone. Yeah. So it's not him, the God. It's God, the father, fathering Amen. you through someone. Amen. Oh, did I talk to somebody here? Amen. So we have people who don't understand the meaning of fathership. Yeah. They don't understand that. You know, when, when Samuel, when Samuel, when Samuel was um, in the house of Eli, he was being fathered by Eli. And amazingly, so much amazingly, when God wanted to speak to Samuel, you know what happened? God used the voice of Eli. To the extent that the voice that Eli, I mean Samuel was hearing, it wasn't the ghost voice. It was the voice of Eli. And he went and said, are you calling me because the voice was hearing? There is no any way you can't recognize the voice of someone you stay together with. Where you are sitting, you know exactly the voice of your wife, the voice of your husband, the voice of your child, the voice of your pastor. You know when one is speaking, you know it's that person who's speaking. There's no way he, uh, someone is sleeping and he hears a voice and he goes to, to Eli's room and says, are you calling me? And it means the voice that he was hearing wasn't God's voice. God had to come and call him using the voice of Eli. Are you hearing me? Yes. So if God wants to speak to you, he will use the voice of your physical, who you see, physical man, who is your spiritual father. So he will use the physical voice. Oh, did you hear that? I just said. So when you have a spiritual father, the voice of that man may appear like the voice of a man. But it's the voice of God in your life. So we have a problem where we have people who don't have a spiritual father who just walk as long as they wake up in the morning and they go like this. So they have no one who God speaks to and says, speak to this person. There is no way you're going to become so more important, more than all men of God in the Bible. Talk of Moses who had a spiritual son by the name Joshua. Talk of Elijah had a spiritual son by the name Elisha. Elisha had a spiritual son by the name Gehaz. Oh, you know, only that. You talk about... Um, um, uh, the great man, like, um, uh, uh, let, let me use this example. Uh, let, let, me, uh, let me use this example. Let me take the man who uh, did some crazy miracles as well in the Bible, who had a son. Um, let's not even talk about Paul and Timothy and Titus. All these were great men who submitted under Paul. Yes. Do you hear that? Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. So we have a lot of many of God in the Bible who had a father and who submitted. And it's very important. If you read the book of Kings, the Bible, and Samuel, the Bible speaks of sons of the prophets, 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 to the, the level whereby one of the sons of the prophet in, in the book of uh, uh, Kings, he died with a loan. He didn't pay back the loan. And... 
And the owner of the Lord came and said, we're going to get your children. The Bible calls him, he was the son of a prophet. Did you hear that? Yeah. So it's very important for you to understand the meaning of that. So we have a problem in America where we have few people who understand the principle of fathership. So there are spiritual orphans, spiritual street kids. Oh. We're having so many spiritual street kids without a father. This is a problem where now you don't have direction. You don't have someone to speak to you. This work of faith is not a simple thing. Trust me. You, you meet challenges. You meet things which sometimes you just need someone to talk into your life. But not everyone, but someone. You need someone, not everyone. You need someone who can be talking to you. Who can say, move on, move on. Now pray this way. Now uh, I, Face this thing in this way. So we have a problem where we're having so many Christians who they're just moving in their own way and they have everyone talking unto them. So they're going to internet and check what, what, what they can find encouraging them. So we're having a problem in that. So number one I want you to know is get this revelation. In the book of First Kings 19, the Bible speaks of a very nice revelation. It says from verse 19, First Kings 19, uh, verse 19. The Bible reads, So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shephat, who was plowing with the twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the uh, twelve and Elijah passed by him and cast his mind upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my, my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them, and bore with the fresh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did it. And arose and went after Elijah. And ministered unto him. I like this statement. And ministered unto him. Elisha ministered unto Elijah. In other words, he saved him. Now, I just want to say this of you. Very important. How many here they know the word double anointing of Elisha? How many here once? Ever heard about Elisha and double portion of anointing? Yes. 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 Do you have anyone? Yes. Can I say hand up if you ever heard about it? So we have this scripture here speaking of the mantle, a cloth. Elijah took a cloth and threw it on Elisha. And Elisha was plowing. Elisha has never seen Elijah. But on this particular day, Elijah is passing by and he sees Elisha. And he takes a cloth and he throws it on Elisha. And Elijah says, Master, I will follow you. And Elijah refused, but he said, I will follow you. Why? Because where there is you, there is God. Amen. Oh, you didn't even hear that one. Amen. The reason why he will follow him is why? Because where there is Elijah, there is God. There is God. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, imagine the first mantle which was given to Elisha was a cloth. But then the Bible says immediately he began to follow him. He began to follow the prophet. So the first mantle, the first anointing was the anointing of following. Amen. All right? Yes. And we come to the second cloth which was given to Elijah, I mean to Elisha, when Elijah was going up to heaven. The Bible says there was a child of fire that separated the two and Elijah was raptured. He was taken up. As he was going up again, the Bible says he gave Elisha a cloth, which is the second. Amen. Making what? Double. Amen. So when, when was the first? The anointing of what? And the second one? The, the cloth. And that cloth now was the anointing of ministry. Amen. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> so you need the anointing for following, and then there's an anointing for what? For serving God. Now, we're having a problem. So why... Christians today 
or men of God with their ministries, or some of them they're in ministry, or some of them they Why are they struggling? It's not because of anything, but they lack one thing. They lack the anointing of following, and they lack the anointing of serving God. But trust me, Elisha could end up a farmer if he didn't meet one man who was his spiritual father. Some of you end up being what you are, struggling, just like Elisha, until you meet a father who can raise the anointing in your life and move you from where you are to a next level of life. Well, I think I'm talking to somebody and it's making sense. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. All right. And I want all of you to, um, to, if you have your Bible, do you have your Bible? You have your Bible? Oh, thank you. Um, I saw, a, I had a Bible in my phone, and I used to, to read the Bible in my phone. Until one day, I got a, notif- a notification in my phone to say, update your Bible. I was like, update my Bible? <laughs> Has Adam eaten another fruit or, or something? <laughs> I was like, is a new information, uh, has a new information come in the Bible? So I update your Bible. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so from that moment, I like using the physical one now. I used to preach using an iPad and all that uh, until it said that I should update it. I said, no. <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I need the one which doesn't need update. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I've spoken a bit of fathership, and I want to speak something else now. But fathership is very important, and I want you to know that it's very, very important. I have a spiritual father, too, and he has a spiritual father, too, and his spiritual father has a spiritual father, too. It's a chain. It's a chain. You don't have power. Okay, the word submission, oh, I mean this word. How many here they know a submarine? Yeah. Submarine. Yes. Yes. Ever heard of submarine? Yes. What does it mean? Submerged in water. Now the word is submission, it means submission under someone, under the guidance of someone. No matter what the president, how powerful he may be, he has an advisor. Oh, you didn't even hear this. No matter how powerful the president may be, the word submission actually simply means too much power to be controlled. Oh, did you hear that? It means what? It means there's too much power which has to be controlled. People who don't need a spiritual father, I've seen people saying, I don't need a spiritual father. Anyway, of course. If you have an orca, a small shop, just an orca, and one has got um, a huge shopping mall, who needs an accountant? Tell me. The one who has got a small shop, very small shop, and with the one having big shops between these two, who is supposed to employ an accountant? That's it. There are some, they don't have to have a spiritual father because their destinies are too small. Oh, you didn't even hear me. Yes. We have other people who don't need a spiritual father because their destinies are too small. But there are some people with huge destiny. Trust me, you need a spiritual accountant. (laughs) 
said too much power. Hallelujah. It's very important. I'm telling you, you, you need that. It's very important. You know, when, when, when he came to South Africa, when he, when he came to South Africa, and he says, I want you to be my father. When he came to South Africa, he says, I want you, I want you to be my father. He, he knew, he had an idea of what is fathership. But I said, now I'll teach you what is fathership. And I, I began to teach him. I took him to a mountain, my prayer mountain. I have a hotel which I built on top of a mountain. So I, I took him there, and so I said, just be observing everything. And when he came back from there, he said, it's changed. His mind changed. It's very important, very much important for you to realize. Very much important. And there must be this to be taken out of many people's minds. We are having so many people with a confused mind. Confused, they don't know what is what, what is what and what is which is which. They have got two fruits on a table, and they don't know one, which one to pick. Others actually three, others four. That's when you know the importance of having somebody who speaks with God in your life. We didn't even hear this. I said, did you hear that? That's when now you understand. The importance and the power. Yes. We had a man by the name Paul in the Bible, and you know him, all of you. And this man, he wrote a scripture which says, do not despise the gift of prophecy. Yes. It was Paul who wrote that. Yes. But do you know what made him write that? Because he once despised. Yes. He made a prophet. The Bible says Apostle Paul made a prophet. And the prophet took a belt and tied his waist and said, Apostle Paul, where you are going, you'll be arrested. Do not go. But Apostle Paul refused and said, I'm going to go. And he was arrested exactly as the prophet had prophesied. Oh, when he came back, he wrote a Bible. He said, despise not the gift of prophecy. <laughs> Put a hands for Jesus, somebody. I said, Put a hands for Jesus. When Apostle Paul met a problem <laughs> at the first was despising you know until he he saw that prophecy works yes. Amen. then he says despise not Amen. the gift of prophecy Amen. he said quench not the spirit's fire yes. so it's very important I, i've spoken about about fathership it's very important and you have heard about it so understand this if you have to go far you need somebody who you can submit to. And you can grow under that person. There's not any person who can go to college or university without a lecture. It's so amazing that spiritually we accept to make it without, without a lecture. But physically, we don't accept it. We want a lecture. We want a mentor in business. We want someone in business. But when it comes to spiritually, we, we, we reject that. But it's very, very important. Why so many men of God, they, they're not moving forward. They don't have a father who can raise them up. Who they can make a phone call and say, hi, hi, daddy, teach me something. I'm passing through this. What must I do? Do you understand? Yes. Oh, did, do you understand somebody? Yes. I remember I, I, I prophesied to him. I said to him, I said, I was writing things on the paper. And he, he was in my office and with his wife. And I, I began to write prophecies on, on, on the paper. I even forgot what I wrote. And among the things I was writing, I wrote, I think, the name of somebody. Oh, the name of your wife's ma mother. And my brother. Yeah, I wrote the name of your brother. And, your, and the name of your cousin. Now he's sitting in my office and I'm writing the names. And I've never, he has never spoken to me. And that's my first time I'm meeting him in my office. And I, I wrote the name of his mother, his wife's mother. And she was sick, I think, at that time. Or she was going through an attack and depression. And I saw uh, the brother and the car and the accident 
and I write, and I write down. And you see, so after I, I've, I've written everything, and I think it came to pass, right? Same time, the same time I was writing, it was the same time his brother could be involved in an accident. And I'm writing him, I'm saving your brother from an accident. Wow. And the brother calls, and the brother calls, I almost died today. Fathers are feathers. You need them for you to fly. Yes. Amen. One of us said. Fathers are feathers. You need them to fly. Thank you. Let's go to another thing. I, I want to share something now. Um, and um, it's to do with how many here they, they want to do the, I, I will speak short topics, you know, sh- short topics, but I'll, I'll touch different things. And then I'm going to pray for you. Is that okay? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. All right. So, how many here, they, they, they are into business or they want to do business? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. Can I just speak to you for a few minutes as well? Yes. And I'll speak about the supernatural. Yes, please. And I'll speak about healing please. and deliverance, right? And just to handle some different topics, you know, and you breathe, and you breathe, and you breathe, and you breathe, and as long as you catch what I'm saying. Do you have somebody here with a um, good news translation? Good news translation. Can somebody quickly just go in? Can, can you give me Exodus 11? Good news. Good news. No. Yes. 11. Ecclesiastes. Quickly. 11. So just bring. I want you to read. Just come. I'm going to hold a microphone for you. Verse 1. Okay? I, I, want to, I want to talk about business for a few minutes. Read this one. Number 1. Send your grace across the sea and in this time. In, in, in this good news translation? Oh, good news. Okay, what does it say? Invest your money in foreign trade. Okay, read again. Invest your money in foreign trade. And one of these days you will make a profit. Put your investments in several places, many places. In fact, because you never know what kind of bad luck you are going to have in the world. Okay, that's your Bible. It's in the Bible. Let it this. It's not me who has read it. It's him actually who has read it. The Bible... The Bible encourages you to invest your money. The scripture encourages you to invest your money. I, I want to show you something. In the book of, of Luke, the Bible says, do business until I come. Did you hear that? We're having so many Christians who they are struggling, really. They are struggling. Why are they not supposed to struggle? As a Christian and as a man of God, I am into business. And trust me, I'm in a serious business. A serious business. Uh, for some of you who you follow my Facebook, uh, not, not the ministry Facebook, but my business Facebook. If you go there and see what I'm doing, you'll be so shocked. Mm-hmm. I have a Facebook, an official Facebook. Uh, it's called Shepherd Bushiri Investments. Yes. Yes. You know it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. It's, it's, you'll be so shocked, the things we do and the things we're doing. And I want to encourage you 
Some of you are here and, and you have not a business, nothing planned. I want you to start planning. Yes. Time is now. Yes. I can see millionaires here. Yes. Oh, you didn't even hear me. Yes. What can happen if men like, 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 like uh, rich men like uh, um, yes, Bill Gates comes and say, all this money, I made it because of Christ. D- do you know how many people are going to give their lives to Christ? Do you know how many? And, and I can see that happening. I can see Christians now taking over. And, and I can see you. Oh, my God. They're not even. Jesus Christ. I'm seeing Christians. Oh, my God. I am seeing Christians becoming so rich to a level whereby. The, oh, my goodness. When they tell you. I am what I am by the grace of God. Oh, yeah. We're going to inspire people just because of what we have. Yes. 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 Sit down for a moment. We're having a big problem. It's a serious problem. We're, we're having so many Christians who they believe in what they're in. Yes. Don't believe in, in the situation of passing through. I don't believe in that. I believe in miracles. Yes. And I believe that you can have a, a, a business yes. that can perform miracles. Oh. oh, am I talking to somebody right here? Am I talking to somebody right here? It is very important, very, very important for Christians. You, you must start not just uh, doing some small, small businesses, but begin to plan, begin to do big things. Are, are you hearing me, somebody? My businesses, they, they give me about 300 million a month. Yes. Ah, you see the way you are going. You see jealous now. I was with him in a, in a Mauritius. I was with him in Mauritius. And when we went there and he didn't even know, he's um, actually my business manager. He manages all my businesses. Him, he manages all my business, and he knows the money which I have in all the accounts, in offshore accounts, as well as in uh, uh, official accounts. He knows all the money I have. So this day, he didn't actually know that there's too much money also. So, <laughs> and I said, okay, check the, the, the bank balance. And he was so surprised. I showed him how many accounts? Three accounts. And the other one, there was how much? About over, over 200 million. 200 million. Okay. Let's not even go to other accounts. Let's stop with the, on the 200. Now, I, I'm not just telling you this. See, as young as I am, all right? I'm not saying this for the sake of pride or anything. But I want you to know this. As I am, it's possible with you too. Oh. I'm talking to wrong people. Let me go this direction. Are you even hearing me at all? I'm talking about dollars here. And the other one had euros. And how do you do these things? When you begin to understand and believe God for business and begin to fast for it, pray for it, Seeking God for it, yes. it will perform miracles. Oh, am I talking to somebody right here? Yes. It is very important for you. I'm having faith for you. I don't know if you're believing. Yes. Uh, even if you don't believe today, I'm gonna force you to receive. Yes. Now, sit down. The Bible says, Invest your money in what. In a foreign trade. They say, do not put your money in one country. For you don't know what bad luck is going to face you. It's in the scripture, actually. And the Bible talks about investments. So invest your money. Even when we stop it there, it's okay. Well, just, the Bible says, invest your money. It's, it's there. It's invest. Just that. Invest. Just the, the fact that the scripture tells us to invest. Just that fact that the Bible tells us to invest is very important. We are having people here who 
they, they are with companies. Not actually working, but they just, it's just a paper. In the house. Do you know what I'm believing God for? When you are living here, miracles will begin to happen in your life. This one, I can assure you, miracles will begin to happen. Oh yes, doors are going to open. If the devil closes the door, God is going to open the windows. If the devil closes the window, God will open the whole roof. Oh, are you hearing me, somebody? Oh, you're not hearing me. I believe, you know, I am a man of faith. Trust me, I am a man of faith when I'm doing my businesses, when I'm doing anything. There is no, nothing to do with the strategy much that I involve. The first strategy I use is faith. I don't go by sight. I go by faith. Do you understand? If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. Refuse to remain where you are. There must be a movement. Refuse to be where you are. Or tell your neighbor, I refuse to be where I am. If I can't fly, I'm going to run. If I can't run, I'm going to walk. If I can't walk, I'm going to crawl. Just to make sure that I move out from the position where I am right now. You can't remain in that circle. No way. You, you have to move. Turn up, I have to move. It's important. And I want you to have faith for that. All right. I, I, know, I know you're working, and some of you, you, you have nothing to do with business, but I want you to do something. Begin to pray for, for that. Pray for God's direction for business. And I, I'm seeing God raising great men and women in this small room. One thing I can tell you, I don't have the anointing of attracting millionaires. Amen. I don't have that anointing of attracting millionaires. But I have one anointing of producing millionaires. Yeah. Oh, you didn't even hear that one. Yeah. I don't attract millionaires. I produce. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that somebody? Yeah. Where did you find these people here? <laughs> you come from where? Sierra. You know, it's it's. <laughs> And it's very important to, <laughs> they're they just so crazy, this guy. <laughs> they remind me, they remind me of South Africa, you know. <laughs> you know, in those days, you know, we're having so many churches where, you know, people just going to church and the pastor comes and say, <clears throat> hallelujah. And they should be like, amen. So, oh, yes. Oh God, thy power. Amen. You know, it looks so godly, but there's not even a God there. Amen. I'm telling you, not even a pimple can be healed. Oh, oh praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And let's pray, and the people will be praying using King James Version. Oh, Father, thy mercy, I come unto thee. Where are you coming from? <laughs> Some of us, we don't come to God anymore. We came to him once. We live in him. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to talk to somebody. We don't go in and come out. Go in and come out. We have Christians who go like, Father, I come before you. Where are you coming from? <laughs> it, it means you come and go. You walk in his presence and walk out of his presence. We stay in his presence. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm going to turn to someone right here. We remain in his presence. We, 
we, we remain in prayer. We don't go in and go out and go in and go. We live in him. Ha- hallelujah. You get my point? It's very important. I want you to start believing God for businesses and have proposals. Write your proposals. What God wants you to do is to have the money for the business. What God wants you to do is to write down the proposal of your business. The Bible says write the vision down so that he who sees it may run with it. Did you hear that? It says what? Write the vision down. Habakkuk chapter what? Chapter 2. Verse what? Verse 2. It says, write the vision down so that he who sees it can run with it. And who sees it is God. All he wants to do is write it down and begin to believe God for a financial door for him. You know, begin to plan, begin to do all these things. Don't look where man is going to come from. See by faith, not by sight. Doubt not. Believe. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. You know, when I was venturing in, in mining business, I, I just believed. I just believed. I just believed. Right now, I'm sitting with the 500 tons of, of God. Wow. Right now. <laughs> and I was talking to my son, Brian, of how we can sell it. And he is going to Africa just for that. I'm telling you, God. Yes. And when I was buying the land, it was a land. This woman had, she was selling the land and she said, Oh, there's a man here. I don't have resources for it and all that. I said, Okay, give me the place. And I bought it. I made my own evaluation of how much God down there. Oh my God, billions of dollars. And I bought the land and I, I kept it for three years, almost three years. The land was just kept in Tanzania. And then two months ago, I decided for us to start mining. Six meters down, we, f- we started finding God. A lot of God, a lot of We don't even know what to do with it. If you want to sum, I can give you. But, but, but it, it needs... It, it needs... <laughs> It needs, it needs wisdom. Yes. Tell your neighbor, it's possible. It is possible. No, I'm not your neighbor. I said, look at your neighbor and tell them it is possible. It's possible. Are they believing? Yes. Are they believing? Are they believing? Yes. I just want to inspire you and encourage you. That listen to me. You are so close to become a billionaire. Very close. Yes. Oh, oh. I just released something in the spirit right now. You are so close to become a much billionaire. I can see it. Our community is controlled by rich people who are wicked people. They control the mayors. They control our societies. They control our communities. But listen to me. I I can see now that you are the next person who is going to control the community in a positive way. Am I talking to somebody right here? Yes. Sit down. How many, how, how many are believing? How many are believing that yes. I needed this? I needed you to speak about this. It's possible. I'm telling you. I'm seeing people taking over here. Do you know what happens with anointing? You know, sometimes you, you may be sitting down and you're like, well, what is this, this young boy saying? You know, as I said before, that I, I don't... If I give an example of myself, I'm not, it's, it's not pride or anything. You know, sometimes if it's a pastor speaking over how God blessed him, it looks like pride. But when it is you speaking, it looks like a testimony. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> when it is the pastor speaking about it, it looks like pride. But when it is you speaking about it, it looks like a testimony. So you, when the pastor says, oh, God did this to me. He blessed me this way. Like, are we supposed to know that? Really? 
But when God blesses you, you come. Hallelujah, I have a testimony. Are you crazy? <laughs> you know, the way you feel that you can't hold it, but to speak it out, is the same way I feel. The same way you feel like I have to show to people how God blessed me, how God took me from nobody to somebody. The way you feel is the same way I feel like I have to tell you that God can do it. He did it for me and he took me from nobody. Oh my goodness. Am I... yes. There was this man who was arguing with me and we met at the hotel, a Sheldon Hotel in Pretoria and there's a white man from Holland. And he's telling me that there's no gold, and, and he's telling me, oh, what you're doing is fake. He says, we're poor Africans. So I, 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 I let him speak. When he finished speaking, I went into my account balance, and I said, sir, by the way, this is my account balance. The man went like, ah. He just remained like this for some minutes when he saw the balance in my account. I said, yeah, we poor Africans. Now the man was like, how do you make all this money? I said, no, no, no. Ask me how do we receive Christ. You say it's fake. You say it's fake. Can you fake the bank account? I said, no, let's talk about Jesus. And the man now listened to everything. That's when I saw that the money is an influence. Oh, you didn't even hear this. The man, the man went on his knees and said, please pray for me. Just because of a bank balance. A man was arguing with me, like arguing. He was saying, oh, there's no God. He was like, like, like you know, an atheist. Bring all these things, you know. And I'm like, oh, this guy. No problem. He talks money. That's a good money. But when you are broke, what will you show him? <laughs> well, how do you show him? I just said, oh, you talk money. Okay, let's go to money. I said, oh. I said, uh, by the way, sir, uh, this is my bank account. And uh, this is the little money I have in one account. I said, I'm not sure you the other ones because we're going to faint. But the, in this account, <laughs> the guy, <gasps> he, said, my, he said, oh, my God, my skin. He said, oh, my God. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, too much money for a young man like you. I said, do you know how I got it? He said, no. I said, Jesus. Now imagine you become a rich man. And the journalist interviewing CNN is asking a question. How did you make this man? And they say, Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey. That's where this generation is going. We're a generation we're going to take over. And oh, my goodness, I feel like somebody's getting this in the spirit something's going to happen and I feel it. You're going to control the community because of Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. I receive. I receive. See now. It's in the Bible. It says, invest your money in foreign trade. Invest your money in, in different places. It's, it's very important. Very, very important. It says invest your money in different places. Because if you invest your money in one thing, the Bible, you don't know with the bad luck that can come in that thing. It's important to do try this, try this, try that. One of these three or four, one is going to work. I have uh, an airline for private charter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a commercial flyer like these big planes. I don't do that. I do only for presidential. Yes. Yes. Private jets. Praise God. Oh. Say so connect. I connect. <laughs> so I, 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 do, I do that and I'm into mining, I'm into property, I'm into hotels. Amen. Amen. And I've, I've got universities. Yes. Yes. And I'm into foreign trade, forex. Yes. So when you sit here and they tell you, the, what's the balance in this account? What's the balance? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Receive. I receive. I'm not talking. I am imparting this to you. I 
You be a rich man. I'm telling this man he'll be a rich man. He's going to receive. Receive on his behalf. Receive on his behalf. <laughs> All right. So it's very important as Christians to invest. Jesus gave so many examples of a, a foolish person who got the tyrants and never invested. Jesus Christ gave so many examples about investments. It's very important for you to pray and ask God for the wisdom. You can't, you, I know you're working for somebody, but also people have to work for you. I know you're looking for a job, but come on. Do you know how many people they are looking for a job as well? 